My guest says every believer can have the Issachar anointing. This will give you an incredible advantage over every one of your enemies. Next. I'll tell you, I'm here with Becca Greenwood. And she is another person that provokes me to jealousy. Since she was a child, she was activated in a gift called discernment. So, Becca, uh, for starters, what is biblical discernment? You know, that's a great question. And the reality is discernment is something, it's a gift that is given to us by the Holy Spirit. And so uh, when we receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, this gift of discernment is awakened. So it's the ability, Sid, we can know uh, the angelic realm, we can know the demonic realm. So we know what's occurring in the spirit realm. It gives us wisdom. It gives us the ability to understand times and seasons. It causes us to see and hear from the Father's heart and His perspective. So discernment can manifest in different ways. It can be we can see something, we can hear in the Spirit, we can even feel. Some people smell, some people have what I call this knower. It's like this prophetic knower, this discernment knower that God has well, given What about us. someone says, oh, this, this is a woman that was born with this gift. I don't have the gift, although I believe in Jesus and I love Him. What would you <laughs> say to that person? I believe that the Holy Spirit gives this gift to each believer and that many of us are walking in it. And listen, let's be real. Sometimes we have not because we ask not. So we can even say, Holy Spirit, begin to awaken this gift of discernment in me. Show me how you are using discernment in my life. So this is what I tell people, pray and ask and pay attention. You mentioned that many of us yes. have this and shrug it off. We shrug it off. Rather than develop it. Rather than develop it and mature it. Because one reason why is the gift hasn't been taught. And another reason is we think, oh, that was just me. That wasn't God trying to get my attention. We begin to ignore it. Here is a scenario that happens a lot in our family. You know, we, we all have, my daughters and I all have this gift of discernment. And so there are times we will go out together as a family and either myself or my daughters would say, do you sense that? Are you hearing that? Do you feel that? Do you see that? And there was one time, Sid, we were going to go to a movie. And, uh, and I had just been preaching in this nation. And when I was preaching in this nation, and we had to be really careful about what we were saying. And so we go to this movie theater, and Greg, my husband, looked at me. And he could tell I was discerning. He goes, are you okay? I said, listen, I just preached in a communist nation, but I feel more more danger in the atmosphere here than I did there. I never felt unsafe in that nation. And my daughters chimed in, Dad, we feel it too. And so he said, let's gather as a family and pray. And so we prayed and we sought the Lord. He said, Lord, are we in danger to be here? Is this a warning? Or are we picking up on something in the atmosphere? And we all heard the Lord. It was something in the spiritual atmosphere. We had peace. We watched the movie and we were able to stay and have a wonderful, fun family night. But sometimes we have that discernment and we shrug it off instead of engaging the Holy Spirit and asking Him what is occurring. People actually get deliverance from oppressive evil spirits. Yes, they do. Tell me about one person. <laughs> there was one time there was this lady and she had been in great torment for 24 hours. It was a Sunday night at church. It was my night off. I was enjoying the glory. And one of the pastors came in and said, we need, came to me, tapped me on the shoulder, said, Becca, we need your help. And so I went to the back room and here was this woman said she was in torment, just shaking. And I said, what happened? She goes, this, this just happened in the middle of the night. I just woke up like this. Now, I had done enough deliverance ministry to know, mm, I know I wasn't buying that. So I asked the Holy Spirit, Lord, what happened? And he said, Becca, ask her 
these exact questions in the order that I give them to you. So I said, you were asleep at night? And she said, yes. And I said, and it was 3 a.m. And she said, yes. And I said, and, and your children were asleep? Yes. And your husband is out of town on business. The Holy Spirit is giving me these questions and I'm repeating them. And she said, yes. And I said, and all of a sudden you're awake at three in fear. She said, yes. And the Lord took me in a vision. And in that vision, I saw her get up out of bed and I watched her walk to the computer and I watched her go to a website that she shouldn't have gone to. And so I looked at her very gently and I said, well, can you tell me what website you went to when you got out of bed at 3 a.m.? And she began to sob and she said, I am so sorry. And she just instantly began to repent. This woman had been trapped in mm -hmm. sin of pornography. And in that moment, from that discernment, from hearing the Lord, feeling that red flag in my spirit saying, Lord, give me what she needs for freedom. She instantly repented, renounced that sin, was radically set free, filled with the glory of the Lord, and has never looked back. So what if I had just pushed away what I would call that knower in my spirit, or that red flag that caused me to say, there's something more that is going on here? But it's all of our senses. We get these nudges. That, for instance, I'll be talking in front of a group, and my eyes will lock on to someone. Yes. That is a nudge by the Holy Spirit. A but nudge. I, but for years, I ignored it. Right. And so what I tell people, engage the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit. He is a gift to us to help us and to guide us. And when we learn to pay attention to those nudges, when we learn when He is starting to speak to us those prompts and we dialogue with Him, He will then give us the answers and solutions for victory. I'm glad God has had <laughs> you put together resources so that everyone, yes. every believer, yes. it's God's will that you operate this way. Now, when we return, Becca will tell about the man in the airport that was returning from having studied in Tibet under a top Buddhist priest and how discernment penetrated the darkness. Be right back. Hello, YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Uh, Becca, uh, you teach, and it's so practical and really uh, works effectively, uh, how to develop your discernment and one of the strong things you teach is how to intentionally cultivate a, an atmosphere for revelation. Absolutely. You know, Sid, this sounds really basic, but it's something I'm very passionate about. When we are cultivating an atmosphere for discernment, we are ones that are spending time in the presence of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. A word that I will even use is intentional surrender, meaning that we worship Him, we glorify Him, we come before Him, and we cease resistance. We yield to Him, and we begin to cultivate an atmosphere where we hear His voice, we know His voice, we're reading the Word, and we say, Holy Spirit, let Your Word come alive in me. You know, Catherine Kuhlman had this awesome quote that I love. It isn't silver vessels that he's asking for. It isn't golden vessels that he needs. He just needs yielded vessels. And one of the greatest ministries that I have personally ever witnessed was a woman that says, I was God's last choice. <laughs> and that means it doesn't matter what you have to give. That's right. It matters whether you want to intentionally yield to God. Yes. Okay, 
tell me about this guy that yes. studied this under a top Buddhist priest in Tibet. Absolutely. So here we are, right? We're in the airport. I'm traveling home. Been teaching on deliverance all weekend in prophecy. And so I'm, you know, in the airport, Sid, there's no personal bubble at the restaurants. People are like this close to you, right? right. And you don't know them. So we're sitting at the booth and we're about to order our food. And this young gentleman gets set right next to me. Now, I'm a discerner. I see and I feel and I hear in the spirit. So I felt this vibration. And I'm just going to say it, it was a demonic, occult, mm -hmm. witchcraft vibration coming from him in the spirit. So I looked over the menu at my friend who also discerns and we're kind of making eye contact like, you know, and so we order our food. He orders his and I feel him looking at me. So I turn and I smile and I said, hello. And he said, oh, can I ask who you meditate to? I said, well, you can. And he said, who is it? I said, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, oh, I just returned from Tibet. I was with the top Tibetan Buddhist priest and he taught me how to meditate. And Jesus was one of my spirit guides that came to me when I was meditating. He said, can you tell me? I feel warmth. I see peace and joy and this countenance, this light around you. Do I have that on me? And I thought, perfect setup from the Lord. And I said, can I be really honest with you? And he said, yes. And I said, now I, I'm meaning this in love, but I said, not really. Can I show you what I feel from you? And he said, yes. And so I said, this is kind of what it feels like. Uh, and I started trembling and making that sound of that vibration. And he looked at me shocked. He goes, why don't I have what you have? I said, because it wasn't Jesus that came to you. It was an angel of darkness appearing as an angel of light. How did he react? He said, I want what you have. Will you lay hands on? Really? Yes. So here we are <laughs> in the restaurant, in the airport, lay hands on him. And I began to pray and he looked at me and he said, my mother has been telling me what I'm doing is wrong and she's a Christian. She's been praying for a divine appointment for me. You're that divine appointment. He knew that. He knew that. And he instantly felt the presence of the Lord. I said, do you feel and know the difference? And he said, yes. And he said right then, Lord, I surrender my life back to you. And he looked at me and he said, I will begin going to church with my mom again on this Sunday. Tell me about how the Issachar anointing operates with discernment. And first of all, explain who Issachar was. Yeah, Issachar was born, you know, was Leah's son and from Jacob. And it's interesting, Sid, the time he was born was very p prophetic because it was during the wheat harvest, which is also the same time at Pentecost. And so his name means that one, you know, that is blessed, that is a gift. And so Issachar became one of the leaders of what we call the sons of Issachar, the tribes of Issachar. And he grew in favor and discernment. It says in the Bible that the sons of Issachar understood the times and the seasons and the way Israel should go. And so people are saying, well, that's the sons of Issachar. You know what I find interesting? When all the tribes gathered together with David, and this should give us great hope. Every one of you listen, because when they gathered for David to become king, they had to bring thousands from the other tribes. But 200 of the sons of Issachar could accomplish what it took thousands from the other tribes because of the discernment and wisdom. So what is it? The sons of Issachar. You say, these were men that God anointed in the Bible. But the reality is he's called each of us as a son and a daughter to have the anointing, to understand the times and the seasons that we're living in, the times and the seasons that we are in as a family, the times and the seasons that we are in personally. You know, the sons of Issachar knew when it was time to harvest. We have all been prophesying we are in the greatest time of harvest. And, and you know what? As things get darker yes. in the world, those that have the sons of Issachar anointing are going to shine 
and they're not going to be afraid. They're not going to be afraid. Anything. It's time that your discernment wakes up. <laughs> Becca will pray that Issachar anointing when we return. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! We now return to It's Supernatural! Becca, give us some practical tips on how to discern in our everyday life, uh, at home, with family, with work, with job, whatever. That's, that's uh, at an airport. <laughs> yes, at an airport. You know, Sid, we already talked about earlier, right? We've cultivated, we've intentionally right. cultivated that relationship with the Holy Spirit. So what we have to understand is He is with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And He's not an it, He's a person, right? And so when we encounter Him, that presence is rubbed on us like anointing oil, that charisma, it, that anointing. And so we take it with us. And so in every day, life, you begin to look like what we talked about. What are those prompts? Are there those nudges of the Holy Spirit that He's asking you to do? So it could be when you are in your workplace, all of a sudden someone is walking by and you just feel the intent or you feel or hear or see that person and your eyes are drawn to them. As we said, stop and engage the Holy Spirit and ask. You you know, Lord, what is it that you're saying? Listen, even in our homes, people ask me this a lot. How can we discern even in our homes? We want to have an atmosphere of worship and welcoming the presence of the Lord into our homes. And when we do that, listen, we can discern uh, our children. We can discern what's happening with our spouses. And we can take that and we can begin to pray. We can begin to encourage them. And then by by the way, if you don't have this inside information, uh, no wonder you have problems. That's right. Wouldn't you like to work on inside information about your spouse uh, before the <laughs> <That's> explosion? <laughs> That's right. Uh, by the way, what do you discern right now? What do I discern right now? I'm, I, that's a great question. I discern right now, Sid, we're seeing so much chaos in our world right now. And that, that the enemy, there is a battle that is raging in the world right now. But this chaos and confusion that we're seeing, Sid, is not so we are defeated. Literally what I am discerning, and I want you all to hear this because I'm going to apply this to you personally as well. What I am discerning is we are entering into the great greatest glory, the greater glory than we've ever experienced before. And so for each of you that are listening, no matter what we are seeing, you know, I, I shared this, this scripture when I was teaching on the CDs. It says, Arise, shine, Isaiah 60, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Even though there's darkness covering the earth, the glory will be seen on you and will increase on you. Do, so, do you believe it'll be seen on people? I believe it'll be seen on people. Think about Moses. You know, well, when he, had, he, to he had to put a veil, but the Word of God promises us, we with unveiled faith will radiate. Even when I was sharing about this young man in the airport, he saw, that light that he saw on me was God's glory. And so he, I want you all to hear right now that even what I'm discerning right now, even over the next three months, as we see things unfold and there's increased chaos, keep your perspective on Him. See from the Father's perspective from heaven down when you encounter Him and let that glory increase in you because this is the finest hour of Christianity, Sid, that the world has seen. And listen, we have to have kingdom discernment. You have to have kingdom discernment because I'm going to be real honest. If we listen to the media, if we listen to the voices of the world that are trying to promote 
fear, then we will succumb to that fear. We are not ones who are to have a spirit of fear. God is awakening glory in each of us in this season that we will be the ones in victory. We will be the ones uh, with the solutions. Becca, I'm going to have you pray in a second for the Issachar anointing, mm -hmm. but I want you to know that you either know God or you don't. Has nothing to do with church attendance. Come on. Has nothing to do with <laughs> what you've been taught. And just to make sure, so you receive all the Issachar anointing, I want you to say this prayer with me out loud, right where you are. Dear God, Dear God I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I believe, I believe. the blood of Jesus has washed away my sins, and I am clean. And now that I am clean, I ask Jesus to come and live inside of me. Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Becca, pray. Yes. Lord, I release right now the boldness to be a demon tormentor. Lord, I release right now the discernment to see and hear and the angelic realm, that they will know that they know that there are more for them than against them. And they will understand, as the sons of Issachar did, harvest, how to lead, how to be a solutionist, how to walk in victory, and how to have discernment, Lord, even for the appointed time of their destiny that you have called them into. In Jesus' name, amen. Call now and get Rebecca Greenwood's brand new book, Discerning the Spirit Realm, and her exclusive two-part audio CD teaching series, Discernment Made Easy, plus her bonus booklet, Easy Reference Guide to Breaking Strongholds, an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9710. Through this powerful book, you will learn how to partner with angelic activity, discover how to release God's breakthrough answers through effective prayer. Understand how to pray with power, warring from a position of victory. Learn how to recognize demonic forces at work in the atmosphere and shut them down. Discover how to uncover cues from the natural world to enhance your spiritual discernment. You will also receive Rebecca Greenwood's exclusive and anointed two-part audio CD teaching series, Discernment Made Easy. You will clearly understand that every believer has received gifts and abilities from the Holy Spirit, including the gift of discernment. Discernment is a revelatory gift that can be cultivated. The lessons and practical examples in this teaching are so clear that you can teach your children how to do it too. She even includes includes powerful prayers including a prayer of impartation of sons of Issachar anointing, an impartation of the gift of discernment. Plus, you will get Rebecca Greenwood's bonus booklet, Easy Reference Guide to Breaking Strongholds. Included in this guide is a demonic grouping list, which includes symptoms and how to be set free from demonic strongholds. These include demonic strongholds in our minds, thoughts, emotions, and spiritual lives. The traps that lead us into this bondage can include trauma, betrayal, Betrayal, abuse, rejection, abandonment, bullying, ungodly control, accidents, and so much more. Don't miss out on getting Rebecca Greenwood's brand new book, Discerning the Spirit Realm, and her exclusive two-part audio CD teaching series, Discernment Made Easy, plus her bonus booklet, Easy Reference Guide to Breaking Strongholds, an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 970. One zero. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9710 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.